Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to our Tuesday night open TTD live let's play. Hello, welcome to Wizard Brandon, Untraceable Smurf, Party Piggy, Tim Men Above the Line, and everybody else who's joining, including, including uh, Stitch and a load of other people. People are saying greetings from po Poland. Uh, I'm sure that we've got people here from other locations as well. Hello and welcome. Oh my goodness. Right. That intro was not quite as quick as the intro that I had to record last night when we accidentally fired artillery shells. I won't spoil any more than that. <laughs> yes, we did some recording last night. Uh, me and the Viewer Plus subscribers. And we, there, was some, there was some shootings going on. And, and, yes. Oh, yes. How is the, li how is the little one? The little one, um, doing good. Yes, he's doing good. Thank you very much. He's, he's getting very big, uh, compared to the size that he was. Um, and he's doing very well. He's still keeping us up at night, of course. Uh, but, eh, what are you going to do, eh? <laughs> What are you going to do? There's not really much you can do about that, is there? They, uh, it changes as time goes by, doesn't it? Eh? Um, how's the other little one? How many little ones do you think I have? I Well, I, I have two. Two little ones. One's bigger than the other one. Um, the very little one uh, was sick on the other little one <laughs> uh, this afternoon. So, uh, she wasn't very happy about that, that he was sick on her, but there we are. Uh, does your daughter still like to have a brother, or would she now um, rather have a puppy? I don't think she would ever want a puppy. Um, she's got fish, and she's very happy with that. We got more fish today, actually. We went from six fish to twelve fish. We doubled our fish. We did. Indeed. If you are not watching live, or even if you are, uh, we're going to try and get the gameplay started soon. We're going to get the gameplay started in around three minutes, four minutes time. So uh, if you're watching live and you want to get yourself a cup of tea or a packet of biscuits or something, now is the time to go and do it. What type of fish? All I, I don't know what the new ones they've got because they came back from the shop and didn't tell me. But uh, we've got uh, one lampi and four rasboras. No, wait, five rasboras. And now there's uh, a total of 12 fish. Um, I do have a video. I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Actually, shall I see if I can show you? I'm going to see if I can get the video on my computer. I took the video from my phone recently, like a few minutes ago. But my phone automatically syncs to the internet. And because of... Oh, hang on a minute. That's no good. Because of power of internet... Boom. There we go. So these are the Rasbora. That's the Lampi. We've got these golden ones. There's three little golden ones. And at the back there with the bluish stripe, there's three of them as well. So, the, wow, that's the the technology. The te Imagine trying to do a HD video that you took not long ago. I mean, you wouldn't even do HD video. A number of years ago but now the fact that that automatically syncs from my phone straight onto the internet and with like two clicks or maybe three i was able to get the video and then with one press of uh my touch portal i was then able to just focus that on the screen technology eh? what a setup what a setup so yes the news is the kids are good we're good and we've got new fish. Um, also, we're not going down. We're not having fish cam. We've already got cam one. We've already got cam two. There's cam two. We used it just a second ago. Cam three is currently under maintenance. Uh, I have managed to secure myself all of the parts that I need. So um, I'm going to put cam three together at some point and we'll get it going. Uh, but they are very small. Yes, it's a relatively small tank. It's a 45 litre tank. Um, what else was I going to say? Right. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at 1970 saves today. 
So we're going to do it live. We've not done it live before. We've not looked at viewer files live. Uh, so we'll see. Um... <laughs> I can't open my email without at least three separate devices demanding security codes. That's actually why we were uh, slightly late going live tonight. Uh, we would have been on time, but the um, restream that handles the multi-chat, you know... In the chat, you see Restream Bot, and it tells you if anybody said anything on Twitch. And if you're watching on Twitch, it tells you if anybody said anything on YouTube. Uh, that bot uh, required me to log in again, and it required me to do two-factor authentication. So I had to scramble on my phone. And of course, just as I was about to do the code, the code then changed. So it was invalid, and I had to do it again. That's why we were just a minute or so late. Um you saw a TV show that was filmed in 2012. You could count the pixels. Yes, is amazing. Uh, I remember the the first camera phone, like proper camera phone I had. Um, because you could have pictures before then. But it was the Sony Ericsson K800i. Yes, it was. Uh, can I get the specification? Specs. Here we go. The phone, Sony Ericsson K800 specifications. Let's find out what it got. Um, it had a display. Uh, the the image the uh, the display size was two inches. Um, at a resolution of, let me see if I got this right. Yeah, 240p. 240p. Not 1080p, not 720p, 240p. And that we'll get to open TTD in just a second. And the main camera, now this was actually really good for those days, was a 3.2 megapixel camera. And the dis and the um and it had a Xenon flash. And Xenon flashes were far beyond most of the available flashes that were out there these uh, in those days. Like the um LED flashes and stuff that phones had back then were pretty much pointless um but three yeah even then like 3.5 mega uh, 3.2 um, megapixels you could do photo quality on small images back then but, but yeah anyway i already digress <laughs> so we're gonna play open ttd but it's gonna be a little bit different today because we're gonna be in different stuff uh yes graham we have come a long way that was my first camera phone it was um back in those days i used to Oh, right. You guys, do you guys like knowing this extra stuff? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, I have butchered that. Let me see if I can get my computer to type it for me. Konica Minolta Dimage. That's what I had. And I, it was... Let me see if I can find it. When I see it, I'll know it. There it is. It was the XG. Can I get that full screen so that I can show you guys? Open image in new tab. Here we go. This was the this is what we we used before camera phones. Okay, folks. Look at this. Uh, the Con the Konica Minolta Dimage XG. This was a fantastic camera for the time, right? Um, I don't know, like, its general reputation. It was also 3.2 megapixels, but it this was even before I had the Sony Ericsson K800, I think. This is what we took out places when we wanted to take photos. You would have your phone, which would have been a big thing that couldn't do anything but phone and maybe text, and you would have a camera like this. Um, I think it recorded to SD card. I'm pretty sure about that. I mean, mine got danced on. Like, there's somebody who'd be like, "There's there might had screws missing and all sorts," but it still worked. It still worked. Okay, as a general rule, people are a fan of the small tangents. Okay, that's fine. We'll 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 try and keep the tangents uh, small and rapid fire. I would love actually to get another uh, Konica Minolta. So if anybody is bored and wants to have a look 
on eBay and stuff. I will put it in the general chat on Discord now and find out how much a secondhand one of them would cost. Right, so this is a little bit different. We're not going to jump into my Let's Play. We're going to jump into some of the viewer games. So if we go Let's Plays, Season 10, Viewer Games, uh, I need my... I, well, I'm going to need my second um, stuff. Uh, but I'm going to... We're going to have a look at three viewers today. Now, if we have a look at three viewers and there's still time left in the live stream, we'll then go into my game and carry on. Okay. Floppy disks. Oh, my goodness. Yes, so a floppy disk... A standard common floppy disk was 1.4 meg. Yep. I mean, if I go on my phone, go to the last photo that I took, and go to details, the picture, uh, file size. Yeah, the picture is 3.9 megabytes. So, some quick maths which I'll do with a calculator, is 2.8 floppy disks. The last photo in my album, just one photo, was 2.8 floppy disks. Gamer Clark says, I remember when floppy disks were floppy. I do as well. Uh, they were, what was it, five? Were they five and a half inch? And then uh, the other ones were 3.5 inch. Anyway... Uh, we're going to have a look at Saber Psycho's 1970 save first. So I've just loaded that up while we've been waffling and talking. There we go. Now, folks, on an extra oh, to 5.25, that sounds about right. Um, on an extra small tangent, okay, I have an interest in like this sort of like retro technology, especially stuff that I've used in the past. And you see these crates behind me, okay. Two of these crates is what I call my tech archive. Okay, so one of them has a ZX Spectrum and a Sega Mega Drive 2. Okay, so two old consoles in it. And another one has my other items from the tech archive, including a PSP, um, a creative MP3 player, and a Sony mini disc player. Now, I actually did a video about the Sony mini disc player on my variety channel. So, if any of this stuff remotely um, interests you, head out to my website, go to uh, masterhellish.net, and um, at the bottom of the website, there is the link to my YouTube variety channel. And you should subscribe because even though I don't post on there very often, there's some really interesting stuff. At least I think it's really interesting. Uh, so if I go into videos and just go down. So the last few videos are um, most expensive clothes I've ever purchased. The model railway exhibition, fixing my phone, meeting the moderators, uh, and then the Sony mini disc Walkman uh, video. And I will quickly. Audio is coming out my computer, isn't it? There we go. That's better now. Uh, I will I will post that in chat in case anybody wants to go and look at that mini disc um, video later. Right. Let's see if the sound is coming on the stream. It looks like it is. Fantastic. Um, ZX Spectrum. Yeah. I I I think I first gamed on an Amiga, but I didn't own one. And the first thing that I owned, or at least my dad did, was the ZX Spectrum. He bought it for me. Are you starting a new game? No, we're not starting a new game. We're looking at viewers that have submitted their 1970 game saves. So you guys are going to try and keep me on track for this. Uh, so the first thing we'll do, as with ev any of these viewer game saves, is we'll head to the middle of the world. We'll turn signs on. Because if anybody... Um, if anybody has done this challenge, has changed any settings, then you're supposed to list it here. So we can see that uh, Saber Psycho has increased the vax maximum number of vehicles. That's fine. That's a fine setting to change. And also adjusted the maintenance, maintenance, maintenance interval. Again, uh, that is fine too. That, that doesn't really affect 
gameplay comparison in any sort of way. Oh, breakdowns turned off from 1958. Okay, so that's uh, one of those ones that makes it slightly easier in some ways. Um, it depends on the way you look at it. There's a, a lot of back and forth on that. Uh, also, we can see here that uh, Saber Psycho has provided their Twitch TV link, which is fair enough. You know, if you want to go check out their VODs, um, you know, they're in this showcase. Why not? There is a cheeky little link there. Um, and they've looks like they've um, they've added some extra mini goals. So on the Preservation Land, send one type of car part. So I think what they've done is they're using the Preservation Lands to make a car part and then moving it over to the Vehicle Challenge. In the No Train Zone, it looks like they're doing trams to all cities. So that's interesting as well. Uh, okay, keeping up with chat. Um... Yeah, uh, I didn't actually. I had the ZX Spectrum, the upgraded version, the one that had the tape deck in it. So mine's got a tape deck. If you guys would like me to do videos of all of my tech archive, go over to that um, variety channel and make sure you like uh, the video that I posted. Because like the more my videos get likes, the more I know I can gauge the interest. Uh, and then maybe I will do more of those sorts of videos. Game Clock says, I doubled down on Sony mini discs. I sold it recently on eBay and it went for a lot more than I expected. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I don't think I actually, do I have any of the mini discs? I have, I have the mini discs. I have some mini discs. Yeah. I don't know what's on them. I think one of them's share. Um, I think one of them's S club seven. Um, I think you've got your beat. My dad for uh, bought a first family computer. Oh my goodness. I don't, I don't even know. It, that had tape recorder storage. Yes, so the, the ZX Spectrum that I had was tape recorder as well. So I started on that sort of mode as well. Um, and tape drive, yes. Uh, okay, right, I think we're up to date. <laughs> People are going crazy on the tech. Uh, maybe we need uh, like a discussion in the general forum, like a new thread creating call, um, tech. Let's go over to the City Builder Challenge first and see how things are going there. Okay, here we go. So... Here is Hellish City. We will turn the station labels off now, I think. Just it gives us a better look. Um, a similar sort of layout here. So we've got four main stations. However, it looks like... Well, we have got satellite stations. We've got some smaller satellite stations around. But four main big stations. Uh, let's see. Should we put the music on? There we go. We'll put the music on in the background. Nice. The jazz jukebox. Um, J. Rich says our first computer was a VIC-20, which saved and loaded from a cassette player, yes. Our first proper family computer, I'm not counting the ZX Spectrum, because that's more like a, it was more of a games console to us, um, was uh, an actual PC, and it was a Pentium 1 with a 133 megahertz processor. Megahertz. One core. And it had a, a 3 gigabyte hard drive. Which was massive for those days. Uh, right, so we are, it looks like we've got 12 length stations because why wouldn't you? A really good, nice use of the canopies there. Not canapes, that's different. Um, we've got depots on the way in. Oh no, wait, sorry. Depots on the way out. Fair enough. Hellish City is up to 23,000. Oh, that's good. Hey, DJ Egg, welcome. 23,000. Let's have a look at the actual challenge and see how it's going. So, um, out of a total of 480 months, the town has stalled 229 times. By math, my maths, that makes it less than half, which is good. Very good. Fantastic. Fantastic. 
Brandon says, I seem to recall Hellish City being like 700 in your first game. Yes, you had a problem with your town growth, didn't you? Because you didn't actually have a full proper service going. Um, you, you were just doing a delivery and it was just one thing. And I don't think it was, it was regular enough for the game to count it. Uh, looks like the, actually the problem here is passengers. That is surprising. Oh, and cast iron. Passengers and cast iron. Well, what's... Where's the passengers coming from? So presumably nearby we've got some big cities. So yeah, here we go. Look. Wooding Hatton. We've got... What appears to be passengers there. And passengers here. There's no actual passengers on the platform. Which is strange. Why is there no passengers on the platform? Is it just because there isn't a service up and running yet? So there are some vehicles. And they're emptying in the depot. What? Brandon says, I forgot the standard open TTD rules. Yes. Learnt you from Spiff. Uh, and you're happy to catch your life. Well, welcome, Alex. Welcome. Yes, quite a few people have come over um, learning about me from Spiff. And you're all very welcome to join. Above the line. Oh, crap. Oh, maybe it was a train crash above the line. Maybe it was a crash. Um, although that line, you can see it's got brown dirt all around it. So I suspect that is all brand new. Yeah. Brand new, says Gil Genji. Yeah, I agree. Brand new. I like these junctions. Uh, I think you got some. We've got some corners here. Where's my keys? There we go. We've got some corners here. Oh, I can use the button. I forgot about the button. Boing. The draw button. Do you see these corners here? Oh wait, I have to s switch this green as well. Um, that is actually um, shorter than a train length. So the train might slow down a little bit, but it's not that short. Eh, it's okay. It's okay. You've missed a lot. It's fine. I'm, sh I'm sure you can catch up. I'm sure you can catch up. It's not a problem. Um, yeah, I, I should... When I go into draw mode, I should get it so it changes the scene as well, shouldn't I? didn't think of that. I'll upgrade that for next time. Uh, look at this here, though. We've got... Um, did they just normal signals? Path signals? What sort of signal is that? See, that's a path signal. That is not. So, we've got... Um... Oh, yeah, they removed the button to show the other signals. Yeah. It's not always convenient to have full length turns. That is true. Very true. Gilgame says those trains can muster 160 kilometers an hour. So a four length turn is enough. And he knows about it and decided it'd be fine. That is true. Yes. Um, so <sighs> when we when we talk about train lengths and turnings and corners. Um, I'll you when I say the rule, um, and I, I need to make sure I try and say this correctly. That if a train turns twice in the same direction within its train length, then it might slow down. That's the rule. If a train turns twice in the same direction within its train length, it might slow down. And there's a key word in that, and that's might. Okay, so you could do the maths or do some testing and see because it might not okay but if a train doesn't then it will never like it won't slow down if the turns are further apart than its train length you see ah uh. oh, it was a block signal mr mr potato says it's block signal it, yeah block, block signal indeed um, we've got some depots here that are uh, off the well, yeah, off the line, and they are non-through depots, which is all nice and good. So overall, Heli City is looking fantastic with twenty-three thousand. Can anybody remember what I was up to? Shall I try and open a second instance of OpenTTD? 
let's do that let's do that we go to steam we right click we go to properties we go to install files and we go to browse then we go to the file location open the open ttd exe and then we can have a second version of open ttd and i can load uh my let's play there we go hang on a minute what episode did i label this live stream as 38 yes 11k is the guess from chat uh we're up to 13 nearly 14 that's not too bad that's all right if you've managed to make it to above 10k you're doing well because remember this is a challenge series it's not a lay back and put some track down like i deliberately did things that was difficult um especially things like getting cast iron and sodium hydroxide to the levels that are required yeah really quite difficult even if you can get the number of vehicles that are in there okay so we're back uh we're back to saber's version of the game now yeah, it's looking good isn't it looking very good what can we learn what can we learn from saber's um layout apart from the fact it is gorgeous what if we go to the world map go to the world map get rid of town names actually we'll go like this look at that look at that network there spans the entire continent all the way from all the different directions there bring in the resources and then you can see there is the vehicle challenge relatively big um, spread out and it looks like we've got a bridge there we go here's here's Sabre's bridge similar to my bridge we've got some and uh, standard here we go this is what I'm talking about about um, standard off the line double depots where uh, you go off the line and then the double depots that are off the line don't have the through line that goes straight through okay it's um yeah off the lines and then it, and then it comes back again so you, that's what those ones are um so i presume they're carrying vehicles i would expect so let's have a look yes vehicles lots and lots of vehicles and then uh, Saber has um, given them, looks like they've given themselves a challenge and they're bringing over something else so here we've got some trains and we've got two engined trains and they're bringing vehicle engines so vehicle engines are being produced in the, no, uh, in the preservation lands that is an interesting challenge to give yourself, let's have a good look at the preservation lands then Let's see if they've broke any of the rules, shall we? So let's have a look at this railway line. We'll follow it along. Okay, so far so good. Looks like it's traveling naturally across flat land. Yep, bridges over water like we like to see in the preservation lands. And a nice big, presumably naturally flat area for the engine plant. Fantastic, look at that, brilliant. Brandon says, I don't like four depots as my trains will get lost. Um, yeah, I don't think it really works like that, Brandon, anymore. I think maybe in the past, trains were more likely to get lost, but uh, I don't, it certainly doesn't seem to happen these days. And also, if you have four depots off the main line, where they can still go down the main line, they won't get lost. They'll just travel along, and then if they need the depot, then they'll go off the main line and into that depot. Plus, with no breakdowns, you don't need four steppers. That is true. That is true. Um, Yeah, personal preference. There's a lot of personal preference when it comes to breakdowns and uh, depots and so forth, isn't there? Uh, okay, let's have a quick look at some of these lines and see what we've got here. So we've got um, going up the natural hillside, building even with land height changes, 
doing a good job there. Natural tunnels here by the looks of it, I would hope. Yeah, looks good. Bridges. Looks like uh, taking a slightly longer route round. Because normally maybe you would just go straight across. He can't see very well from here, but if we go to the map of the world, which is already open down there, and we zoom in on this area here, and we change to topography mode, you can see that... There we go again. You can see that this area is quite hilly. Um, and there, there is odd bits of hills. But for the most part, it seems that going around rather than through in the preservation lands was much better on this occasion. Gamer Clark says, I think I need to catch up. I'm only at 5,000 population in 1963. That's still good. That's still good. You've got to remember, I've been playing this game on and off for like 25 years. This and its predecessor. Uh, or predecessor? Is that American? Predecessor? What's the English pronunciation? Um, yeah, for 25 years. So, well practiced there. Anyway, let's see where this goes. Where does it go? Oh, folks, we completely forgot to see how many giveaways we're going to do. Let's get the wheel up. Uh, there we go. Let's spin the wheel quickly. Here we go. So if you're new here or you don't know, we spin this wheel on Open TTD live streams. Find out how many giveaways we're going to do. We either do one, two, or three giveaways. And today it is just one. One giveaway for today's live stream. And the giveaway that we're going to be giving away um, I'm gonna skip that one because I think it's bugged out maybe I just need to refresh let's have a look okay uh, we're gonna go with zombie driver HD so there we go folks if you want to be within a chance of winning Zombie Driver HD, go to portal.masterhellish.net. Okay, so this here is a rel oh no, it is a good way of doing bridges over water. Um now okay, there's if we look at this, right? We look at these bridges and you can see that um this side is the main on the on one side and the other line is the main on the other side this is the correct way to do it to balance it that way um, even if you go straight here you've got a kink going in or you can kink here and then go straight okay now this is the right way to balance a bridge and it is very well done and it's it's been done on both sides but the length of the bridge is not actually that long and in my opinion I would say it's not necessary here because one of the main reasons you might do this is low throughput due to signals not being able to be placed on the bridges okay um, so because you're not placing signals on the bridges you get a, a lower throughput on your line and you then put more bridges to compensate for that but because the bridge spans quite small here I don't know. I mean, it, it's a good thing to do, and they've done it very well. Um, but I'm just not sure I would have bothered for that length of bridge, uh, to be honest. Now, speaking of um, signals on bridges, you can put signals on bridges in Transport Fever. And guess what we're doing? He says, checking his calendar. Yes, on Thursday. Yes, this Thursday is Transport Fever 2 Series 2. Episode 1, Livestream 1. Um, buckle in, knuckle down, and get ready 
for an 8 o'clock UK or 7 o'clock in the evening UTC live stream for the first of a series. Get it down in your calendars. Uh, most Thursdays we're going to be streaming that. So come for Tuesdays for your Open TTD and come Thursdays for your Transport Fever. Well, this is all absolutely brilliant. It's a lovely little network. Oh my goodness. Oh, we've got we've got some special logic merges and stuff here. So if I did not know better, I would say this is some sort of load balance. But I don't actually... Bother's not the right word. Bother? I don't quite go that deep into the game. Yeah. It's, it's a very nice network, isn't it? It's just a balancer. It's a balancer. Open TTD magic. Now, very often, people will say, Hey, Hellish, if there's path signals in the game, why on earth do you need other signals? Or the older ones? Um... And this, this is the answer. This, this here. Um, well, actually, there's there's two answers. The first answer is is to keep parody with older versions of the game and the original Transport Tycoon Deluxe, who, which had those older signals in. Uh, the second reason is that you can use and do things like this. Okay, with these. So if you want to know more about balancers and priority merges. If you go to my playlist, so on, you can go to my website, you go to masterhellish.net, uh, there's a playlist button, and you can have a look at my tutorial playlist. At the end of my tutorial playlist, there's some videos from Lugnuts, and they are all about um, all about the these sorts of logic gates. Michael Wishoff's here. Hi, welcome. Did we get the pop-up on that? Is the pop-up working? Let me see if we can have a pop-up on the screen. Did I just miss it? Where's my pop-up? Ooh. Oh, no. What's going on? Where's my pop-up? I want my pop-up, please. Okay, never mind. Um... Let's go. So let's have a quick look at the vehicle challenge. So we know that they're bringing stuff in. There's some nice use of the ISR stations here. Again, uh, nice junctions slipping on and off the line and the main lines there. Again, this is a, a really good way of doing it. Relatively complex signal. Well, that that was super complex signal like, signaling. Yes, this is a good way of doing a station as well. Have a train come off the main line, go under, through a station, and back on again. Um, I don't know if we have a name for this kind of station. It's kind of like parallel and next to the main line. Let's say it's Benir. It's a Benir station. Benir is a word that my daughter made up. It means besides. Um, Nearby and next to. Benir. Benir. So there we go. Um, there we go. Ryan says, I've caught you live. I usually have to resort to watching later. Hope you are well, sir. Hope little man and family are doing well. All doing well. Thank you very much. All doing well. Welcome to the stream. We're not looking at my game right now. We're looking at Sabres. Uh, we've been looking at Sabres for a while now. Just because it's fantastic. Uh, finances uh, Sabres at 2.5 billion. Uh, operating profit is humongous. Um, company details: we've got 1.3 thousand trains, so they've had to up uh, update the uh, ve um, vehicle limits there. 410 stations. Got some aeroplanes uh, again. Using aircraft uh, to ferry around engineering supplies is actually a very good use of aircraft. Uh, over here, though, what we got? What are we moving here? Food? Oh, is that engine? Uh, that that'll be farm supplies coming in. So I was like, why are you like? How are you moving food with aeroplanes? But then I realised uh, that the farm farm supplies. It's a row row. Gil Game says, yeah, I I know it's a row row. But I'm talking about 
Oh, God, where's it gone again? Let's see if I can find it quickly. Let's see if I can find it quickly. I'm pretty sure it was round here. Here, here it is. Okay, so I was specifically talking about not just a Roro station, but a Roro station that is next to the main line, okay, rather than on a branch line. So, for example, I mean, that's a terminus. I mean, that all, all the ones on the branch lines are terminus, like this. They don't have to be. You could still do them, Roro. Uh, but if you've got a Roro station next to the main line and you go under and round the main line, and we're going to call that a Benir station from now on. Special word. Um... It's a pretty intense game. It is a pretty intense. Some fantastic stuff. Look at this. Okay, let's let's go up to the no train zone. What have we got going on in the no train zone? Let's look at the world map. Uh, not a lot. Uh, not a lot to begin with. But there is something. There is something down here. So it looks like we've got a tram service. Yeah, tr technically trams aren't trains, are they? Eh? I guess. Technically, it, it kind of feels like trains, doesn't it? Does it feel like trains to you? I don't remember what we said, but yeah. Saber prefers Terminus. Uh, Terminus are quite good. Yeah. Uh, anyone else you usually let their other half do the main grocery shop? You've you've just been and spent a fortune, came back with not much, everything. Smiles at me and says, buy me. Um, at the moment, my my wife does the food shop, uh, the grocery shop. Um, I used to do it. Um, it. It's all just been down to who's working, what days and what shifts and what fits in with our family life. Save us here. Yes. Yes, we're looking at yours and we were just about to move away. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do is I'm going to go be right back. Remember there, I'm going to re-announce that live giveaway. And, um, yeah, I'll be back in just a, a couple of moments. Because um, I'm going to get refresh my drink. And then we'll we'll talk to Sabre. Uh, Sabre, did, do you want to come on voice? Uh, hit me up in the Discord. Uh, come, into, uh, come into one of the rooms, like uh, room one or something, if you did. Um, but I'll, I'll see... I'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. Um, um, who's that that's trying to come in there? Oh, for crying. Oh! <laughs> it's the signal. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I should think... I, should I stop some of them? I'm, I'm, right, Trotamus is stopped in the station. I'm, you can't go anywhere. I think... No. Ah, ah, oh, 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 <laughs> that's what you call an epic save. Oh my goodness. Somebody, somebody clip that. Tidmouth says, of course you picked Open TTD. You made it. I didn't make it. <clears throat> Upira says, yes, Hellish made it. I didn't make it. I was nothing I, to I do agree. with none. I agree. I agree. Of course you. You go in there, Mel. Yeah. You go where you go. Yeah. Christmas party. Christmas party time for lady. I don't get... No, I missed my Christmas party because what was it? We're seeing family, wasn't it? We're seeing family. But there we go. There's baby Hellish. Somebody will, somebody will clip that. Uh, <laughs> let's have one more side view, one more time. There we are. Hello. <laughs> says donate more. He says. <laughs> says donate more. All right. Big fat bridge. Coming in and out. And then I'm gonna cut past the edge of here, maybe. Let's let's bring this out straight here for now. And then oh, I I, I kind of want to just do it straight. I don't. Uh, oh, I got oh. eaten. Two ways to do things. Great I hope that's a heart. 
Stories. Yes, it's a heart. I'm trying to get you back up to full hearts before I start doing bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, but if he never gets back up. <laughs> okay folks welcome back uh that clip there in case anybody's confused uh was of lady hellish when she was pregnant with my first child which was like seven years ago so that's what that was um so yes we're gonna um do the giveaway sometime soon um The streaming widget is on screen. Yes, I can see that. So if you enter the giveaway, it should pop up. But it wasn't working in OpenTTD. So if I do a store pop up now, then it should come up on the screen. I would hope so. Is it not coming up still? Oh my goodness, what have I broken? Have a look. Oh, did, oh, I pressed the wrong button. I did the text. I did the chat only one. Look, there we go. That's what wasn't coming up in OpenTTD. So bear with me a second. I think there's something missing. Okay, let's try another pop up. Uh, let's say you want to go to my gaming videos. It's not working. Oh well. Um, yeah, if you're hungry, don't go to the supermarket. <laughs> yes, that that is a that is a good tip. That is. Vehicle production. Yes, we'll go and have a look at the vehicle production. So let's see here. Vehicle production is here. And we can see that the main vehicle's out is probably at the end of this line, which is here. So we've got the assembly plant. All the different bits are supplied, which is fantastic. Uh, we're doing 3,600 tons of vehicles last. Oh, wow, only 61% transported. So we need more trains here. You can see, look, the uh, we've got loads of tons of vehicles. Good time to start the monthly giveaways. Monthly giveaways will will start not in the middle of the stream. I have to do stuff to set them up. So we will not be starting the monthly giveaways just yet. I will try and get them ready for Thursday's live stream of Transport Fever. Okay. Um. Yeah. It looks like the pop ups may be broken. Oh well. Uh, but yes. Um, oh, there, oh, there's the pop up. It's working. Sabre says, I think I'm now in 1980 and a lot of issues at present have been fixed. Yes. Fixing stuff and issues is always a thing. Look at this. Look at this, these buildings here. I love the, Is that the high security one? I think it is. Anyway, we have thoroughly enjoyed looking at your network. Very impressed with a lot of it. Um, I could probably spend the rest of the live stream just discovering things, learning stuff, tweaking and playing and fixing. But unfortunately, we, we, we do have to move on. Okay. So thank you very much for submitting that. I look forward to seeing your year 2000 save. That's the next save we're doing, folks. Okay, so the next one we're going to do... Is... I need to try and find it. Here it is. Okay, so this one has been um, 
submitted by Sig Hill. And it's called Wooding Hatton Transport. So we'll get that on. Yeah, watch the stream later on and put some comments in of all the stuff that I missed. <laughs> uh, thank you very much again. It's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. Look at this, folks. What's going on here? Hellish City, 99,000. What? That is crazy. A hundred percent for 480 months. What will the did learn for the year 2000 saves be? You only just reached 1970 last night. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to just keep an eye on it. But we will... I will let you know Like when we get closer. You've, you've got time. It is insane. Let's go to the middle of the map like we were doing with... Um... Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go over to the middle of the map and see what... Right, so if there's any settings that have been changed, they are supposed to be listed here. There isn't actually anything listed at all. Let's just have a look at settings and go settings with a different value to default. Settings with a different value to your new game settings. Let's have a look. Um, okay, so the number of trains and stuff has been increased. We're still 12 tiles long. Okay, that looks pretty standard. Um, yeah. Inflation on, forbidden night degree turns on as normal as we normally play. Yeah. That, that all looks pretty, pretty, yes, yeah, supplied for all months. I think that's what you get. Look at this. Great big, great big swathes of land flattened. Whole parts of the cities dedicated out for road networks. Somebody has put some serious, serious effort in for this one. I really hope you're in chat. I, I really, who, who was it again? It was Sig Hill, wasn't it? It was Sig Hill with the, the Wooden Hatton Transport. 7.6 billion in the bank account. 1.3 thousand trains. Um, 127,000 rail pieces. This is why we have the preservation lands. Breakdowns are on, says Guild Games. Uh... Breakdowns are on. Set to reduced. That is insane. Look at it. You can't even see the city for the... What? Okay, let's have a look at the world map of this one. Already, look at that. Whoa. It appears they haven't changed any of the game parameters apart from allowing more vehicles. Whole swathes of network down here. Looks like we've got one, two, three, four large feeder cities. And they've also grown another couple over here. Can you see the feeder cities? There's one there. One there, one here. Oh, actually, that looks like it's three or two or three different cities. That is almost certainly a city. That look, I don't know what that is. We'll have to have a look in a minute. And then, look, these are just ready here, just in case. It is way more complicated than the magic roundabout. Look at these lines down here. I mean, I, I bet that when we go in... Right... Um, and have a look at each part individually. There's nothing that crazy. 
Okay, so let's now turn signs back off so that we can actually see something. In fact, let's just go into build mode. Like, make vi um, the buildings transparent. So, oh, I'm getting arrows. Ooh. Are we still live? I need to check. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. I just got a disconnect and a reconnect message, and it was very quick between each other. Um, but yeah, look at all these road vehicles going around helping to, to deliver and grow things. So if we look at the individual bits of the network, you know, you've got a line coming in with a train. How long is that train? 12? Length 12? Uh, you know, there's nothing crazy about this station design. Train goes in, signals on the exit, com trains go out. Um, what we got over here? There's an engine plant. Let's go have a look at the other parts of the world. Oh, look at this. Okay, that's interesting. So what, what we got going on down here? So we've got a backwards and forwards train service between these two towns for some weird reason. Looks like we're trying to grow the city. But I'm not sure why. So it looks like we've just got a couple of city growers going on here. Interesting. Good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. Over here in the preservation lands, similar sort of situation look. Just doing some city growing, probably for later on. Oh my goodness, look at this. These towns have been grown from the very beginning with great big holes in them ready for airports. That is absolutely fantastic. That's some forward planning, that is. I mean, there's no there's, there's no hole in that city, but... Yeah, this is, this is what's going on here. It's just... It looks like the only thing they've got are these... Is it those five stations? Let's get the signs back. Yep, yeah, five stations. And that's it. Maybe an early money line? I'm not sure, Gear Games. Maybe maybe an early money line so apart from some whacking great big cities in the no train zone which obviously they're planning a lot of airports good forward planning some uh two or three city growers in the preservation lands with a couple of lines between uh the same down here in the uh vehicle challenge it is obvious that the effort here has been mostly focused over here on the hellish city challenge i i wonder how much longer you could run the game before it just fell to pieces uh what's this line here looks like there's some reserved some reserved stuff you see here, look, we just got uh, standard lines, nothing too complex, just lots of trains moving, lots of nice flat land, standard off the... Ooh, is that forced? Yeah. Okay, so we've got forced depots down here. How many 100 plus K cities on the map? That's a good question. Let's have a look at the time directory. Sort by population. Boom. Look at this. So, the biggest, uh, the top the top few towns, I mean, how many are above 100,000? I'm not sure. But the world population is 8.4 million. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, but, 
if we have a look at the top, like, five, maybe? Uh, Trud Town over in the no train zone, 130,000. Lenningfield looks like it's also in the no train zone. Look at this one. Over Fingley is 160,000. Slamway on Sea, I think that's one that we've actually worked with before. 160, uh, 186,000. It's changing too quick. And the biggest one on the map at 303,000. Little Gartberg Springs. Little. I don't think it's little. Yes, 303,000. That is phenomenal. Um, I don't know what else I can say about this one. There is no one bit of these railway lines which is kind of exclusive or extremely unique or I mean there's there's something that's a bit unique here we've got uh, two bulk terminals and two wharfs relatively close next to each other um, that's a little bit unique it's dedication it is it's good planning good dedication look at these lines here they're mostly going underground and just popping out for signals. That's something I've not seen in Open TTD before. I like it. Oh. Oh, I love that. That is cool. Because then you can get your diagonals across there and build whatever you like. Uh, operating profit is obviously relatively steady. Um, so if you nip back to Hellish City, it's still 100%. One house in three days, 99% probability of a new house. That is brilliant. It's going to be 100,000, isn't it? It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh dear. Well, if you like seeing crazy stuff like this, I suggest you give this uh, live stream a like because why not? Why wouldn't you give it a like, eh? Yeah? Let people know uh, that you're enjoying it and also let the algorithm know too. We've got a lot of these kind of bulk terminals and um, quite near each other. It's a really good idea actually to have a couple of bulk terminals right next to each other and then just use them as one bulk terminal. That's something that we can take away from this. So one of these book terminals is related to one city. And the other one is related to the other. So this one is for that city. And this one is for that city. Uh, because you can't have more than one of each industry type per city. So you kind of have to find the midway point between the two cities. And just like draw an, an imaginary line between them and have an industry one side of the line and an industry the other side of the line and then you can kind of service them together i like that that's really good that's actually a technique that i don't think i've seen before um along with that underground train pass thing i mean look look here we've got a, a train that just disappears under the ground where does it go? Where does it stop? No, seriously, where, where did that train just go? It's gone. Here? Is that where it comes out? Just a little shuttle service. I mean, I don't know what it's shuttling or how it's what it's moving, but it is. It's like a metro line. It is like a metro line. We've got some ships going on because, well, why wouldn't you? Just really good. Uh, like I say, there's nothing in here that's particularly complex. It's just the dedication to just fitting in as much as possible with big, long trains on efficient 
simple tracks. Oh, it's probably a delivering engineering supplies or something like that. Because look, we've got a station here that's spread with this um, shed. It's Brandon's shed. Look. It's Brandon's shed. His office is here as well. He can do some work. Oh dear. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, I don't know... Hmm. No, I can't think of anything else. My shed, says Brandon. Oh, it's got my wallets in my shed. Um, I can't really think of what else we can say about this one. Uh, it's just extreme and utter dedication to doing a fantastic job. Well done. Well done. I mean, you know, nearly all of the ones... You know what? In in some way or another, everybody does well. Either in their own way, or pushing their own boundaries, or making big this, or, or efficient that. Um, but just the absolute yes. Yes, the wow stitch. Should we just wait for it to tick over to 100,000? Because it's going to happen, isn't it? 9-7. 99-7. 99.8. Nine, that was 99.9 for a moment then. It's 99.8 again. 99.9. 99.8. And there we go. 100,000. I think I need a break after that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will. I'll take a very quick break. I'm going to stretch my legs for just a minute. And then I'll be right back. And... We'll end the game giveaway, so if you want to get involved with the game giveaway, go to portal.masterhellish.net. You have not got long. Remember, if you want to take part in this series, you can do. The next lot of saves is the year 2000, and it only takes 13 and a half minutes per year. Uh, I can't remember what year we started in now. Was it 1950? So you've got to do 50 years times 13.5 minutes Divided by 60. That's only 11 hours gameplay. I think I did the maths right there. 11 hours gameplay and you can catch up. Well, no, not only catch up with the series. You can get ahead in the series. Because um, if we... I, wait, do you remember what year we did start in? You know what? I'm going to look that up. Load game. Parent directory. Parent directory. Uh, play along map. 1930. Ah, right, okay. So, I got it wrong. We're 40 years into the game, times the 13 and a half ish minutes, divided by 60 minutes in an hour. It's going to take you nine hours of gameplay to catch up to where we are right now. Nine hours of gameplay. Um, that's all you need in order to catch up in this series. And if you want to take part in the series, uh, go out to. Uh, masterhellish.net forward slash s10 all the instructions are on there please do follow the instructions if you don't you may come across problems but there we go brandon says a good game from start to end at optimal time takes like two four hours right what two four hours do you mean eight hours i don't know I, I, I'm not quite sure what Brandon's talking about. But I'm going to take that quick break, uh, stretch my legs. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We'll do that game giveaway and we'll get around to our third entry of today. So thank you very much. We'll see you very soon. Does it accept petrol? No, no, it doesn't. Oh, of course it doesn't accept petrol. We've got a petrol station at the top and it's not down here. Ah. Oh. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> 
I'm an open TTD dev. It's all about pushing forward for Hellish Town. Uh, and then we're going to do a diagonal path through the landscape. Well, actually, this, this looks like it could be something close to okay. <gasps> oh, my, that was a lot. What just happened there? Uh, why didn't it cut through here? Is there an antenna on the top? Didn't I have enough money? For they look at you and say, which lord? Uh, Tang, what's the name of the lord we need? Uh, never remember the name of the lord. Maybe the letter says something. Okay. Where yeah, have a look at the letter. Uh, have a look at the letter. Uh, you have the letter. It's a little bit uh, small in writing. Maybe, maybe Gar, follow me. Would you be able to try and read it? Oh yeah, I'll have a go. Hang on. There you go. Pass it back! Pass it back! To allow for that to work. Oh! Okay, folks. Oh, yeah, that that was probably one of the best D and D clips we had. I I would love to do more of that series, but um, I I would love to do a, a full D and D uh, role play series. But I I know that my current viewer base uh, is not as into it as me. Um, also, I would like to dedicate more time to it than what I have. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we won't be doing. That. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future, we'll be able to do uh, these things like that. Yeah, th they did prepare that egg. They really did. Uh, okay, I'm just loading up the next uh, the game save. Uh, let's see here. Where are my... Oh, my goodness. Right. There's a lot of messages on this one, so let's get our screen sorted out. Uh whew. It's been a long day, folks. It's been a long day. I got woke up uh, at three o'clock, and I was kind of like on and off sleep. I did one bottle feed, I think. I don't remember. Um, and then I started work at half past seven, and I worked all the way from half past seven till half past five, uh, and then we had dinner. I did a, uh, what we did, we, we added the fish to the fish tank. Uh, I did another bottle feed. Yeah. Uh, and then put him to bed before saying goodnight to my daughter and starting the live stream. Whee! So there we go. Right, before we jump into this last one, uh, there's a few kind of reminders, announcements, and all of that sort of good stuff that I'll quickly just run through. And I'll try and remember as much as I can, as quickly as I can. And I think some of this will be interesting to you, so listen up. So first off, we've got the beginning of our Transport Fever 2 uh, Series 2 uh, live Let's Play on Thursday. Uh, same time as this stream, uh, except it's on Thursdays and not Tuesdays. So make sure you come along to that because we love Transport Fever. Come on, it's like Open TTD, but it's it's good. You know, it's kind of new and good. Even though we like Open TTD, we tra we like Transport Fever too, as well. Um, at the weekend, you will be getting your dose of Factorio. That series is still going good. If you're a Viewer Plus subscriber, then you can join in with the recordings of the Viewer Plus series. And if you're not a Viewer Plus subscriber, consider becoming one because it's the best and really the only way to support me. Uh, so there we go. Uh, what was I going to say about it? Yes, if you have some spare cash, please do consider uh, subscribing to Viewer Plus. If you do not, doesn't matter. Please do not force or take money from that you would need for other situations and maybe food budgets and stuff and send it to me. Don't do that. Only subscribe to Viewer Plus if you have spare money. Thank you. Okay. I mean it. I, I the, the support is incredible, and it enables me to do what I do. But I don't want you to be out of pocket. My main core content is free, and I always intend it to be free. So enjoy it. 
you can help me out in other ways like the video share it with people you know so you make sure you subscribe to all the channels and that sort of stuff there's lots of free ways you can help the community and uh, my community luggy's here hey luggy welcome i said we're going to end that giveaway and i will do so so we'll end the live giveaway so the first thing was uh, fantastic live streams of videos and to sky congratulations you have won zombie driver hd now we will be doing the monthly giveaways they will be announced on x previously known as twitter i don't think i'll keep calling it that we'll see uh facebook youtube and of course my discord uh recently i did a poll asking you guys what you think the future of my channel should hold besides open ttd i got quite a lot of people saying hey i missed the poll what's going on i did post uh, i did post the poll on twitter facebook instagram youtube and discord so if you missed the poll and you wanted to be able to take part in that you need to make sure that on one of those platforms you've got your notifications enabled for me so you don't miss out on things like that and my giveaways uh to sky yeah thank you love your videos thank you very much i'm glad you do happy gaming enjoy zombie driver hd some of these games some of these games eh? um and uh, we have gaming with the viewer plus subscribers next monday we'll be back on the farm i think it might actually be our last visit to the farm let's have a look uh, i'm gonna look a quick look at my schedule No, no, it's not. We've got three visits to the farm planned in August. And then in September, we might do a special modded uh, Minecraft series. But we'll see. Oh, hey, I can chat in here now. Used to be, used to have to be verified or something. Uh, you still have to have the uh, phone verification. Um, if you're watching on Twitch, but uh, come over to YouTube if you like. The video quality is better on YouTube. I stream at 20 meg to YouTube and only 6 meg to Twitch. Right then, the last one for today's live stream, and we are looking at Dave Two Bob's um, game. Now I can't remember if I've seen Dave in chat. I think I saw Dave right at the beginning of the live stream. Um, so, uh, let's have a look. So, Dave has given themselves an extra goal in the no train zone of connect cities by boat using large hovercraft. So, that's cool. Hey, Dave is in chat. Uh, if you want to get on voice chat, Dave, uh, in the Discord, I, I am in room one. So, that's up to you. Preservation lands, you're doing a cargo tram network. Interesting. Waiting for decent trams. So probably won't see much over there. You're going to have... Uh, your goal is 20k population without missing a month. And you achieved that in 1969. Well, congratulations on getting to 20k population. Uh, I failed to get to 10k population. Only kind of just... We nearly managed it. Stretch goal to 30k population. Ooh. We'll see. Boatsy, boatsy, boats. And then goal. Can ships deliver? Okay. Let's have a look at your world map. This world map is a bit of a, a spoilers. So there's nothing happening in the preservation lands at the minute. You're waiting for decent trams. I can see that you've got loads of little boaty goodness going on. You've got locks and boats all over the place here. Well, not that many boats. Let's have, how many have you got? Okay, you've got 139 ships, which is a medium amount. Oh, you're using groups. It's not very often we see somebody using groups like this. Now, there are advantages to using groups. Just two things. One, I can never remember what they are. And two, I don't think those advantages actually apply to my style of gameplay. Um, although I can't remember what they are. So I don't know. Um... I can't remember what... I, I don't know. But I use shared orders. And shared orders has a lot of the advantages that groups do as well. Sabre says, I was going to use groups, but you're too lazy to manage it. I know, right? 
Um, I'm kind of like that. I'm kind of like that. Uh, does it look like there's a massive amount of sh ships in the no train zone at the minute? Unless they're just not showing up on the map? No, there isn't. There's not a massive amount. So it looks like most of the... Oh, wow. Look at this network. Look at this. This is cool. I can see a good number of cities here already. Okay, let's get... Um... Ugh. Your, your company's blue. That makes it difficult to see as well. Ah, uh, that'll have to do. That will have to do. So it looks like, if we assume that this is hellish city here, you've got one, two, three, and a half <laughs> feeder cities. That's very good. You have everything important grouped. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Dave says, I can never remember what the trains are supposed to be doing. Ah. Brandon says, I recently learned from mo a mod that, uh, for Factory that lets you group trains. Essentially, it's shared orders for trains, right, Brandon? In, um, in uh, Factorio, which I think is fantastic. Maybe we should add it to our series. Maybe we should add it to our series. Let's go have a look at Hellish City. Here we go. So again, we've got this kind of four big stations sort of thing. We've got, although this one's not quite as big, Humpy Depots. Yeah, we've got the Humpy Depots in there. Like to see the Humpy Depots. It's a good way of doing um, a lot of forced depots in a very short space. We've got a Coke oven and lots of passengers coming in. How are we actually doing on the challenge? Let's have a look. Okay, so we can see that you haven't quite managed to reach your stretch goal of 30,000 um, without losing growth because you have lost growth for a total of three months. But to get to 22,000 continuous growth is absolutely fantastic. And we can see that you're doing really well now as well. You've got 99% right across the board. Let's have a look at your company. Okay, so we've got 6,000, uh, 6,000, 600 trains, 1.2 billion in the bank account. Um, a lot of infrastructure. Excuse me on the yawning, folks. It is definitely my bedtime. Uh, but we will definitely have a good look at Dave's network. So, uh, good use of Humpy Depots. Relatively sharp track turns here for 12 length trains but if you're going in and out of depots your train slows down anyway so that turn's not really going to make much difference uh, like so you got these depots here and when you're going in and out of a depot for example this one here you slow down to I think it's 60 kilometers an hour although having said that have you got these on your exits? Looking at the signal. Oh no, the long entrance is coming under the tunnels. Yes. Okay, so the long entrance is coming under the tunnels. Do have the depots. But then the sharp turn exits do not. I don't know. <laughs> Graham says, how on earth do you get growth from month one? You've restarted like five times and never managed it. That is a good point, Graham, because if, I think I had three months where I didn't grow. Unless, unless, if we go back to... Back to actual open TTD. Unless the three months here that... Dave didn't grow was the beginning of the game because we don't count that we don't count those initial three months so that might be the case um, let's have a look around further parts of the network so we've got quite a, a tight bit of network in here why is oh my goodness right okay so we've got tracks going under a station. It was the first three months, yes. So we're not counting the first three months. So you've, you're still on 100% at the minute, Dave, then. 
in, in terms of our challenge. That is fantastic. Look at all this network going on down here. Looks like you've got spaces on the ends of your stations for uh, trains to leave the station and then uh, let other trains go in. You're obviously using a good number of uh, ships and boats around here. You've got the double industry going on. With you've got like one wharf here and one wharf there, and they are probably connect. Uh, like there's probably like a city in each direction. Uh, let's see which one's which. So that's Slarwood, and that's one Gleddington on Sea. Where's Slarwood? Oh, so it's these two. So it's these two towns uh, just here. So we've got one town here and one town here. One of them relates to that wharf and one of them relates to that wharf. Okay, cool. We need to do more of that. Like get multiple wharfs right next to each other but have them linked to, uh, to towns that are separate. Graham's like, phew, I don't feel so useless now. Yes, Graham, don't count the first three months. I mean, if you're able to do it, great. Um, but no. Because it, it can take three months for a train just to arrive, right? Um, yeah. Whoever named Glenton on scene needs their vision checked. A bit, vision checked. Uh, yes, they, they do, don't they? Because it's not on sea at all. In fact, it's slightly in the hills. It is slightly in the hills. Okay. Uh, again, Humpy Depots. Um, looks like it's both on exit and entrance. Using... Is that full-length trains? Yep, full 12-length trains. Um... City growing, going fantastic. I mean, this kind of idea, it looks like quite a few people have penned their cities in to try and make them more dense. I'm pretty sure that technique works. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that technique works. Maybe we need to run a test, like see if the density of a city, you get like bigger buildings like in more of the city compared to a city that hasn't got that kind of bounding box. Um coal limestone hub so there's a good deal of limestone sat there let's have a look at the town directory so look that's a uh, four million in world population which is good so we've got a uh, 80 population city there 66,000 population here 60 49 and hellish city down there in sixth place with the population of uh 22,000, which is fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Once the city has exceeded the range of your station, you don't need it to be any larger. That is true. Denser? Denser seems like a good idea, but not larger. I can see Dave has gone through the, for the let's just dig through the hill, we don't care methodology here. Although, even though using land bridges, still got a nice little bit of... Hang on a minute. Ooh, I don't like this. I'm sorry, Dave. Can chat guess what I don't like about this? This is the first thing that I'm like, I, I'd change this. Any Anybody in chat can guess what I would change here. And it's not just put a land bridge all the way across. It's not. Um, I'm stalling a little bit because of the delay. DGX says the bridge goes up and down for no reason. Disguise says up and down. Brandon says the bridge isn't flat yet. So this could just be a tiny oversight, but... Isn't that better? Hey. Eh? Up and downy on the bridgey. I mean, it's not important. 
is not important in the slightest. It's not going to affect the network. It's not going to affect the trains. Um, it doesn't actually make any difference whatsoever. Uh, I suppose... I suppose the bridge is two tiles shorter. <laughs> why bother? Why that bothers you? Um, just because it could be flat. You like, you know, I it, it's just I like it. I'm not saying it should change. It's a personal preference. Definitely a per. Look, oh, you did it flat there. Did it flat there, Dave? I'm gonna have a look at all your bridges. Okay, humpy bridges. Um, um, they they have to be humpy those ones, because they're over water. Yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna cause any problems. Bridge is bridge from headland to headland, not that flat. Yeah. Anyway, I've just been picky because of a personal preference. The network is obviously fantastic. You're doing very well. Uh, again, I'm not seeing anything obviously... What's the word I'm looking for? Like... <laughs> I love this. Mess this up. <laughs> you just... Instead of fixing it, you just put the tr tunnel underneath and he's like, yeah, there you go. That'll be fine. Brilliant. Love it. I love that. That's great. Um, there's nothing like groundbreaking, I think was the words I was looking for. Like, you've got nice stations with good pathing. You've got a good length, they're nice and straight. It's all simple. You've got good depots. Um, nice, you know, relatively direct paths. Uh, your signal spacing is not too far apart. Um, loads of really big positive things here, like... Nice long stations, lots of... I've said depots already, haven't I? Um, it's all brilliant. So, as kind of a whole, it is very, very nice and very well done. But you look individually at individual parts and it's just like, yeah, that, that's 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 a nice long station. Yeah, that's, that's some humpy depots. Um, there's nothing, like you say, groundbreaking that I can see. Like, maybe I'm just not being clever enough. Maybe I'm just not seeing some of your brilliance, eh? But it, it, it is very nicely done. And to be able to build Hellish City up in the manner that you did, um, up to 22,000 so far, 100%ing it. I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes in the future. Just double checking, I try and remember. Oh, you did do a little bit down here in the vehicles. Okay, let's have a look at what, oh my goodness. Wow, look at that. Right, we're gonna I think we're gonna have to turn the signs off here just to have a better look at what's going on. So again, we've got oh we've got a wharf and a bulk terminal right next to each other. Um some nice bridges condensing down into a glass works. And then we've got an electric arc furnace, a sheet and pipe mill, an oxygen furnace. All within close proximity, and the wharf, and the book terminal. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nuts, that isn't it, Graham? Eh? Uh, and then not far away, you've got the glassworks there. That's some pretty, pretty impressive lines. Look at the, look at these lines here, to come in and round, join up. Um. We've got some sharp turns coming in and out of the stations, but I don't think that really matters in the grand scheme of things. Like, these longer diagonals on the main line are probably more important than the final turn into the station because your train's going to slow down to enter or exit the station anyway, yeah? Here's some good levels of efficiency indeed. And what we got over here, so that's the lime kiln. And we've got um, off-the-line double depots with... Looks like we've got a switchback. Oh, actually, it's a double main line. Okay. I mean, I've not done it like that myself personally before. Not sure how well that works. Uh, Proses, I've played this as a kid. I couldn't dream of making anything like this good work. 
I, you know what, I think, you know, with a bit of practice and a bit of learning, like loads of people could do stuff like this. I mean, it's very well done, but I think other people do underestimate them. So, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Look at that. Look at that. All the ships. Whoa. Whoa. Look at this. So we've got a body plant, an assembly plant. Uh, that's the component factory nearby, along with a wharf and a book terminal. Another book terminal, another wharf. A tire plant here. A carbon back black plant. The coke ovens there. There's a component factory in the mix. There's an electrical arc furnace that looks like it's been used. And potentially, is that a cryo plant? Yeah. Cryo plant creating oxygen. This is crazy. Look at the ships being used as well. And I tell you what, this is one way that we was actually talking on the Discord. Um, when was it? Earlier, earlier today. And we was actually saying the way to easy mode this would be just to have a big lake, put all your industries, like fund your industries, all the way around the edge of a lake, and just use ships to move everything from everything to everything that you need to. Because ships have infinite throughput and you have to do absolutely no infrastructure. So airports have no in, uh, they they have no infrastructure between the airports so you have the airports as infrastructure yes but between them you don't need track or road but uh, the throughput of airports is terrible really in the mid to late game airports are pretty pointless um you do need um airports are really good at certain things like um a nice steady path or trickle of engineering supplies and things like that uh, but if you want infinite throughput and you don't have to worry about it, boom, boats. Uh, the longer you play this game, the more you find that you would never build. Uh, find that you would never. You never would imagine when you started. Yes, brilliant sentiment. No, I mean I I build stuff that I'm like like how how have I done all this? Like you step back and you look at it and you go, wow. That's that's brilliant. And this is brilliant too. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. I think that is a really good note to leave it on, folks. Um, well done, Dave. Um, thank you very much. That is brilliant. Um, there's a lot of advanced signal programming out there. Yeah, I haven't even looked at signal programming yet properly. Um, in the future, maybe I'll look at signal programming. Maybe I'll look at patched versions of the game. Uh, but certainly for now, um, that that's just absolutely gone crazy. Uh, just going to check something. There we go. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff. So thank you very much to all the players. Um... Yeah, brilliant. So thank you very much, Saber Psycho. Thank you very much uh, to Dave. And thank you very much as well to um, uh, Sig Hill, who did uh, their submissions. They were all brilliant. Even Dave's dodgy bridges. <laughs> oh, we, we've got to find something, haven't we? We've got to find something. Um, I love these... these um, looking at your games because not only am I in awe of what you've done and not only do I really like the fact that you're joining in and you're enjoying the series and you can see that people are enjoying playing along with the series um but I I learn stuff too like I'd never really thought about putting two wharfs right next to each other and doing it in such a way that they're connected to two different towns or maybe three different towns and then treating them like one industry Never thought of doing that before. Or maybe I did in the past and I completely forgot about it. Um, and also doing it so a railway line is like completely underneath. <laughs> Don't look at your 1950 save. I look at all the saves, Dave. <laughs> um, yeah, doing it so your track is completely buried but then pops out for signals. Things like that. Absolutely brilliant. 
Okay, folks, like I said, we're going to leave it there. Uh, one, This is probably going to be the last shout-out for this, but not this weekend, but the weekend next week. So next week on the 12th and 13th, myself and a couple of, uh, of the moderators will be in Milton Keynes in the UK. We're going to be doing a couple of activities and looking at a couple of stuff. So if you are in the UK or in the area and would like to meet up with us, maybe do one of these activities with us or something along those lines, um, or and come and hang out for a bit, get in touch on the Discord, let me know um, what you're thinking, and we'll have a chat and we'll arrange and I'll provide you more details. But uh, next week at the weekend, we're Milton Keynes in the UK, me, and uh, one of the moderators and also one of the LAN party people. I said the moderators. So we've got one moderator, one LAN party person, and me. We're the core three people that are going to be there. But other people can pop along too if you want to. Um, I know there's a lot of people that did want to but couldn't. Um, but next year, next year we're going to be doing something maybe a little bit bigger. Um, unfortunately, not in Europe. <laughs> It would be nice. Uh, but if you want to know more about that, come over to the Discord because the details are there and I can let you know the details and, and it would be nice to say hi to some people and do some stuff. But uh, that is going to be all from me for now. I will hopefully see you all on Thursday where we'll start our brand new series of Transport Fever 2. And if not, take care, have a good one and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, folks, and an extra special thanks to our people who have submitted their game saves. You make this series so much more better than just watching me. Take care. Bye.